well, it's the 4th of July over in America. And I even try. I wear a red hat, white shirt, and blue pants, shorts. And I think I when I throw down the street this morning, I saw somebody with sparkly fake wig, red, red, and blue. And I think that the uh, last fourth of July is different. And I think since Egypt, Egypt did what they did, it made the United States have more pride of being what freedom really actually is, because we are we under appreciate what we have. We, I speak in we. I mean, I do. I can't speak for everybody, but I can speak for myself. Under appreciate, I under. Even growing up, I always wanted to live in Europe. I always thought I wanted to live in England for some reason. I thought the British were better. <laughs> just, just me growing up. And I don't know how it is in other places living, because I've lived here my whole life in the United States. And I don't appreciate, or don't, it's not appreciation, it's understanding of what really we have. What really, I mean, what really I have. I feel like the luckiest person today. Because I just thought about some things, some more things. <gasps> and then I was talking about yesterday, I had some ideas. About. And I got a better idea today. To add on. I was doing this, I, I thought about it when I drove home from the store with my mom. I was talking about how I wanted to get an, all different people from different countries, different races, two of each. Male. And I looked at my finger yesterday, my fingers yesterday, I thought that was funny. It was cute. I'm sleepy. I get loopy when I'm sleepy. I'm still kind of sleepy. And if that's an excuse to justify myself for just be trying to be a little bit of who I am. I don't have to justify anything. I can justify why I love people. That's what I've been trying to do. But it's come out the wrong way. Well, it has you have to go backwards before you can go forwards. I thought about that a long time ago, and I learned that through my recovery of um, being a rebellious teenager who drank alcohol and smoked pot. And I learned a lot of things and how to accept myself through this through the program of recovery and I go to AA and NA meetings and those tables you sit there with a bunch of people who will speak the truth of how bad they were how bad they still are because we're not perfect but they'll sit and they'll sit around and be patient and let people speak what they want to say even what's the um, based on principles, not personalities. And I would not be my, who I am today if it wasn't for that program. And it's embarrassing to say that I'd go to those because I'm saying that there's a Like, if I kept doing what I was doing, I would be in the, um, I'd be a hardcore alcoholic, probably, and drug addict. And, I'm just talking truth. Well, 
I sit in my mom's office. I'm in her office and she's a drug and alcohol. put her through hell. That's what drugs and alcohol do. She, she doesn't, she didn't deserve any of it. But I know that we are all fallen angels just looking for our wings. And I learned, I learned faster than a lot of people to where to go, where my wings are. And Every day, it's a new day, and I have to find my wings every day, wherever they may be. You'll find them in the least expected places. Some days, I don't find them. Other days, I do. Some days, I have a broken wing, and I fall or trip. And then today, I think, I think, I thought, I'd just be cute. You see my nails? They're getting really long. And today, I think, I thought about this idea. Like, going off with creating this new... I don't want to call it society, it's just a way of life. Love is just a way of life. That every day we have to find, by us finding our own wings, eventually one day we all have our wings. And once one, because a lot of people don't have wings around us, so we have to let them borrow our wings. Say, hey, today, you want to smile? Or say, hello. Sometimes those things just make everybody's day better. And that's sharing your wings with people. Even if you don't have yours, have your wings. Sometimes that's where you find it, by trying to help others, by pretending that you found your wings, but by, and then by giving somebody else wings by, through kindness and love, you find your own wings. That's one way to find them. And that's a nice way to find them, by finding them with each other. I just thought about that. That's a nice, that's a very sweet idea. Very nice. It makes me happy. And today, um, I went grocery shopping my mama. And I get home. And I told her, I was like, I thought about this, I don't tell her what I do. Not, I tell her a little bit. Because I'm embarrassed. Because Mama is the reason I do this stuff. I don't tell her yet. She'll find out. She'll find out. I told her a little bit today. Just to make her feel really good. Because then I finally understood everything today. It was nice. And I told my mom, my mom. She said, My mom is blind because of bad people. And. And. She's the most sweet, she's a gentle soul and a kind girl. And I love her. She gives me unconditional love. And I told her today that I told her about my idea. I was like, I was like, I need, this world needs like a, we can have our like governments or because that's what we need. We need something to hold us. What is it like together? Huh, not glue. It's kind of like it kind of holds us together. 
I don't know what st substance does that. Gum. Uh, for a painting on a uh, picture on the wall. I don't know. It's gonna fall off eventually. Kind of thing. The governments in society. But we have. We're in 2013, and we need to figure this out already. Um, we have technology. We have everything we need. But we're not use. We need to learn how to use it t to help other people besides ourselves selfishly. Because if we just do it selfishly and just try to be like, I just want to find these friendships through, the, or find my lover, or listen to my music, well, you can have those times too. Because we all need our own time. Because if we were doing helping, if we were finding everybody's wings all the time, that would just take over our whole, it would just drain us. We need our own time to find ourselves. But on the off time, when you, you can try when you are strong enough to give someone else wings. It's not a thing you have to do 24-7. Just when you're, you're mentally and emotionally capable of doing it. Because people drain you. The devil drains you. The devil drains you. Because since we're all fallen angels, because like I didn't understand the concept in um, church very well, I grew up um Catholic, and I don't go to church anymore. But I gave me structure, like I told my class in my class for ethics, we talk about the Bible. And people follow it so strictly, because we're talking about gay rights. And people follow it so strictly that they say, God hates people who are gay. So you're taking the Bible out of context. Back in the day, it was a bunch of people just like you or me were humans, we all feel. And they wanted to get a concept together. of what they thought at the time was right and wrong to give some structure to the people because our brains are con we're constantly growing and developing and back in like we're cave people I, I, think about the cave people they were just trying to figure out how to survive and find fire now we have technology the computer is so weird like <laughs> think about it like just everything I always think about when there was no buildings and it was just environment and things while animals were running in the wild and then somehow we popped up popped out of a vagina and then I'm sitting right here on a couch in a building and it's like I always think growing up you're like a child you're like all these things I remember the other day, like, I remember just walking down the, I, I lived in my city, I grew up there, grew up here 18 years, and once I, first it was the front yard, and I was like, oh my gosh, there's a neighborhood, these houses, it's a big world outside my own house. And then I walk, and then walk with my mom down the street uptown. It's a big world. I'm thinking about different countries, other places. It's like a daydream. That's what it all is. It's a, a mindset. Everything, creativity, even buildings today. This is all imaginative creative. We imagined it, so it happened. So if I can imagine heaven on earth, then we can have heaven on earth. By understanding that we aren't perfect and that we are fallen angels. That's what our flaws are. But there's a difference between trying to be better and just accepting the fact that we're not perfect and just being okay with that. 
You should try to keep being better than you were. That's what I'm trying to do. And it's hard when people don't have love, unconditional love like I do. I'm the luckiest person in the world. And I know I am, because I got a mom who loves me unconditionally. No matter how many times I mess up, she still loves me. Just for, and she let me be exactly who I was. She let me wear costumes, like Scooby Doo and like Baby Bob. She let me wear them when it wasn't Halloween. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Wonder why I am the way I am, but and let me dress however I want to dress. And some days, they like she told me, why she wear two pants when I was little? I would put two shorts on. <laughs> uh. And see, if I lived in my home my whole life, I would be. It would just be love. But then you have to go get food and the struggle, the human condition, and survive. That's serious, and we play it off so unserious. If one person is starving, then the whole world. There's enough food in the world and enough things in this world and that we can help each other and make sure that everyone's doing okay. Emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically. Because if one person is starving and dying, then the whole world is off balance. And that's not heaven. When we say we're waiting for heaven, that's it's like saying, there's there's tomorrow, there's heaven tomorrow. No, no. The Bible and the the way I got brought up, they it tells you that if you do these good things, that's what heaven is. You're, you'll be rewarded. You can be rewarded today if we just are okay and with changing today. Like I know I was. A, that was I wasn't a, I was a bad person before. Cause I, I'm a fallen angel. I'm a person born of sin, like the yin and yang. I'm a person who's born of sin, and we try to be normal and perfect in in this world. No, we're the complete opposite. We're sinful people, and that's something that's a mystery. And I'm okay with that. Well, I'm not okay with the fact that we are sinful people. It's like, I know I don't do the right thing all the time. Doesn't mean I can acknowledge the fact that, hey, mentally, physically, whatever, if I didn't get enough sleep or I'm just grumpy, that I can affect other people around me. And I can say, hey, I know I do this. And I'm sorry. And be that's humiliation. Saying that I know... I'm not perfect, but just because I'm not perfect doesn't mean I can't wake up today and say I can be whoever I want to be. You can. I learned that through solitude. <laughs> I tell you what. Yep, I'm a monk. I'm a female monk. And the only... And I was always, always felt this. I would always, back in the day in high school and school, school corrupted me. School made me think that other people around, that I had, it wasn't okay to be exactly who I was. Because people are cruel. Kids are cruel because of examples. If you, the youth is, see the thing is, like, Imagine this. A community gets together and they all have babies and then they're like, I'm going to trick them. I think that's what they already do. I think somebody's doing that. Someone in the music biz is doing that. Like with the Justin Bieber. They created, they create these characters and they created Justin Bieber. 
to find a real love. And it's a good concept because you can trick the youth into believing the world is good. And because they don't know it, it's, it's all programmed in your mind. You can tell them that. A crazy example a group of people, all loony, because we all are. And say that dogs are the most powerful thing on the earth. and we have to take care of their every woman needs and they're way more important than us we grow up to be dog lovers and like love them See, the children were cause, but the adults were like be laughing because you can and that's what our government does they make us think that we don't have have value and think that they're better than us when in actuality we're equal skin doesn't matter skin color doesn't matter size doesn't matter it's about our soul and I think you can see our soul through our eyes and our mouth that's what my mom said and she was really sad my mom lost her eyesight when I was in third grade, so I had to grow up faster than the other kids. And then a couple years ago, she gave bad, bad headaches, bad, bad, and she had to get her eyes removed. She's so sad because she told me that's what that's when she told me that she thinks that the soul is the eyes. And so then they gave her artificial eyes, and they're beautiful. Um, they're beautiful. And I thought today, um, that we should have, uh, I think that my mom should be in charge of the world. <sighs> She's smarter than me, and she loves me unconditionally. And if, I told her today that, I think blind people, well, since we're like have problems with color and race, you can do one. Since my mom is a white lady, but she's tan, tan. She's really tan now. So she looks like she's the Latino part, Latino, and I look like I'm the white one. It's just skin color. Ah. Is that why Michael Jackson changed his skin color to pr make a point? Hmm. But anyways, and I think I don't know how other blind people are, but my mom, she, she helps people, and I think she's a writer too, and she wants to write. But she has to make money for us to survive. And I'm not perfect. I think my mom's perfect. Even though she's not perfect too. She gets grumpy and yells at me. Because I'm a pain in the butt. <laughs> but I'm, I'm sweet too. I, I told you we're all these sinful things. Sinful creatures. She's sweet. She loves. She's authentic. She gives me. That's why I'm high maintenance in some ways. She gives me everything she has, and she lives off what she needs to survive. She authentic and down to earth, and she can be friends with anybody, no matter what society, what class in society they are. And I told her that today, that her love is going to change the world. Because she, the reason why I can make, do what I'm doing now is because of the way she loves me. Unconditionally for who I am. The imperfect, perfect person I am.
and that's how you can create heaven on earth is by loving people for exactly who they are and she I just love her so much, and I wish I could, and I know one day I'll be able to, she went, she went through the hardest struggle anybody could ever have to do in life, that's why she's such a sweet and gentle soul, because, and that's why I don't have family, she's my family, and I want to change it for the whole world. And I have to appreciate what I have because I have most something most people will never have ever. And I have to keep. I have to look at that. And I'm I'm beginning to change my my attention and the attention paying attention to the thing to my mom's unconditional love for me and on solutions how to change things not focus on problems. So then I thought this solution today. Since we're talking about people are so sighted, could okay, get a female and a male. That's fun to do that. From each country, each culture that are blind, and then you create and let the governments do what they're doing because we need that. But then you can have something on top of that: the world, the peace, the people together. A world for like you know, Gandhi said that. Oh, eye for an eye will make the whole world blind. But if you're led by a, somebody who's blind, literally, and they're leading people who are sighted but they're actually blind, that's what needs to happen. People look through the world. Eyes do. Someone who can't see the world, then you'll know what love is. And I told her that before I left. I told her that everything, will, all the all the hard times, everything's gonna get. I think it's going to get better because she, and that her love is going to change the world because she loved me unconditionally so then I can love other people unconditionally and she's the bravest person with the most courage I've ever met and if I could be half the person that she is That's coming from her love. Then other times, she's funny too. Um, I finally understand her sense of humor, kind of. That's a that's a pure heart, the unconditional love. Because unconditional love has funny sides too. It can be funny. It's not all gushy gushy. Unconditional love loves you when you're sad and makes you heal it heals you and makes you feel good. It makes you laugh. It makes it you and it doesn't tell you. I'll tell you. Because I'm not perfect, I'll tell you how it is and how you should be be. But in actuality, I need to just accept people for who they are and be an example and by be, me being the example it shows people how to be I can't tell anybody how to be they have to learn everything on their own that's what my mom said she she let me learn from my 
being bad to find my I had to find my wings the hard way and you have to do it the only way you're going to learn how to find your own wings is through trial and error but if you keep doing the same thing over and over again and you're getting the same result that's called insanity that's what war is that's insanity so let's try something different okay Each day is a new day to wake up with a new change of heart. Even when your world falls apart. It's a beautiful mess. I like to feel. And it should not be all about the money and cars and how we look. We just have to have clothes that feel nice and comfortable and fit us. It's not about money. It shouldn't be about money. And if you want want things, you have to work for them hard. You can't just keep scamming everybody. You're never going to be happy. Money doesn't make you happy. You already <coughs> Excuse me. And I know this because of my mom's example of her, her living her authentic life. I'm still stubborn. But I'm, I'm going to be 20 years old in <gasps> nine days. And so hopefully, before I leave this earth, I'll learn. I learn every day if I'm not being stubborn and in my ways and stuck being in in action in action and not doing the things I'm supposed to be doing. Because like I used to I'm not really exactly right here in the present moment. At this moment in time to with this mindset, this thought I had to just thought about. Because the only way to live in the present day moment is I thought I could concocted this idea through treatment in recovery and the way I know drugs and alcohol don't work is because I thought they did and I was stubborn like I thought everybody should smoke bar and stuff I even had the audacity to tell my mom that. I was like, maybe you should smoke more. Be more chill. Don't ever say that to your mom. <laughs> See, uh, that's, the, that's the devil talking. That's what drugs and alcohol do. They bring the devil out. And even though you feel good, it hurts other people. It hurts people who actually love you. Who actually love you with unconditional. You don't want to do that. And what was I talking about? This idea. Anyways, I talked a little bit about going back to my treatment because I'm two years and and eleven days. It'll be two years and three months. And I, when I first got sober, the first day, I was like, I'm not going to be clean for the rest of my life. No way. I can't even go a whole day without these voices in my head, like, screaming. These voices in my head screaming. They're just like echoes. Like, and then you're, you're kind of mushy. You know, like, and that you have this ache, and that's what drug and alcohol did take away the ache, this pressure. You're gonna have that pressure for a while, a long while. 
But that's the only way you have, to, you have to go the hard way to find freedom. True freedom. I'm still finding it, but it feels pretty good. It feels better than any drug and alcohol drink would do. Where was I going? Oh, I don't know why. I lost. I don't know where I was going with that thought. I don't. It's just whatever my brain is thinking. Then I go back and watch it, and I'm like, oh, that is a good idea, huh? And that makes my brain hurt. It makes my brain hurt. I'm like, I can't fully grasp what I'm saying, but I'm I'm thinking it. It takes a while to um, absorb the concepts. my truth and the real truth love sometimes I can be lying to myself because I don't understand things but oh I was talking about the Bible earlier I got off that subject okay the real concept that I was getting with the Bible is in my ethics class let me get back to that thought really quick really quick right there um it's just a bunch of people who are just like us, got around and wrote it, and it gave us, if we didn't have the Bible or didn't have any sort of religion in the world, we would be in total chaos. We'd be killing each other. You know, there's no, we need some set of rules. We'd be in total chaos if we didn't have that. But the thing is, as we grow and develop mentally and understand the world around us better, through our senses, through our eyes, nose, we need to find. We need to think, look, figure the rules out through our heart, our love. That's the truth. When you find the rules through truth, that's what heaven is. You have to start with inside yourself. You have to find who you truly are to find heaven. Beep 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 beep. And that's the truth of it. Cause it's all mindset. Even though it does get lonely in here, and you think you're alone. You're not. Well, actually you are. At the end of the day, it's you. Unless you fall in love and you're somebody else. But we don't want to look at ourselves. We don't want to look at that devil and say, hey, that's not who I am. Or who I, that is part of who I am, but that's not who I want to be. Okay? Because everything I've been doing that's devilish doesn't, it may feel good for a second, but in the long run, it feels bad. And I'm not happy. That's fake happiness. Once you look through heaven, and you can say quote unquote hell, quote unquote heaven, because heaven and hell are these words. We give words power, and we think, oh heaven, there's a lot of clouds. Hell, there's a lot of. I heard that there's ice in hell. I used to think there was flames. Then we talk about this idea. I don't know what it is about these people in a cave, and there's a wall, and there's a fire. But okay, the front of the cave is right here. Okay. And then there's a fire right here. And then there's a wall. And then there's people behind the wall. And they're all chained together. And then there's shadow people from their there's shadows from the people behind the the wall. And one breaks away from the chain because something about the shadow people, I don't know this whole story breaks away, gets over the wall and sees the fire something about the fire and then he runs outside the cave and see the world I don't know what that story was about but it had a really good concept about chaining society and freedom what freedom is and when you don't see the flame the fire you just see the shadow people 
and we believe that the shadow people is who we are. No. Okay, anyways. With the whole Bible thing, I told my teacher. Because he's a minister. But with how he is as a person, truly himself, I don't know if he should be leading people. His heart. He has good concepts if he wants to lead. You had to be true in heart and accept yourself for who you are and love yourself. And if you can do that, then you can be an example for other people. But he's not, but he's not perfect, and he just has to learn. I, I'm, I'm learning to accept him as who he is. That, that is at this point in life, because people learn at their own pace. And but by allowing them, by understanding that people learn at their own pace, my door is always open for people who are willing to change and treat the golden rule like the bible says the, the main gist of the whole bible is saying treat if you could take anything out of the bible the only thing you should remember you don't even have to read the bible i didn't read it i did a little bit i like some proverbs they have good poetry it's interesting it's entertainment it's cool that people thought about religion and People go, they're trying, they know, they have some kind of a clue of, they're on the right path, but they're, no one just broke free and tried. Because we're all God's children. We're all his little children, we're just, it's like the devil and God had a baby. And boop, there you go, you're going to earn, boop. And sometimes you're like you're the devil, and sometimes you're like God. But you should live like God. Even though you're half devil, half God. You're half good, half bad. The yin and the yang. And That's a good concept. Let me get a drink of pot. I know some people are diehard for their religion, but religion is based upon, I don't know, how, I like this, that my next class I would like to take is world religion, so I want to learn more about the world, I do, how people are, I think they're interesting, I like differences. But difference is like you have to fully you just have to observe for a second and see the difference and you'd be like you have to absorb it all. And then you can think about it and think how cool it is. But when you're in your world and you meet somebody else's world and it's so different. You have to be like just absorb it and think about it and apply it to your world and accept it for what it is. Say, okay. That's your world. We don't have to live in the same world because we all have our each own unique world. We can share our worlds with each other by accepting each other's worlds. We think that the United States is one world or one country and all these other countries think no one actual I just thought about that idea right now. In actuality, everyone has a different world. And they, people that are go some people that make it make, make you believe that their world is supposed to be your world because they want to take control of you and power and take your money and make you suffer the way they suffer by with their greed and their deathless ways. That's not happiness. You'll never be happy. Those people will never be happy. They may seem like they have it all, but they'll never be happy the way we can be happy. And then once they see that, then they'll understand, and they'll be like, hey, okay, all these people are happy, and I'm still not happy, and I have everything, and they have nothing. Okay, it's about time that I get, I, I, I make it okay, I'll give, 
since I'm not happy and they're happy and they have nothing and I have everything, that quote unquote, I think I have everything, in actuality, the people who have nothing have everything because they found out what everything is through struggle. So then the, the person with the greed and money, he's like, okay, I'm done being greedy. I want to be happy too. Here you go. Now we're all going to be happy together. And that's how he became happy. And he and he was caging people. The greedy man was caging the people. And then he saw, oh, that's not happiness. It's okay. You can come with us. We're not perfect. Even though sometimes we try to be perfect and pretend that we have, we're all cool, calm, and collective. We try it all the time. That's just a part of who we are, too. If we pretend that we're like that way as well. I understand that. And I understand that there's the goofy person, awkward person underneath. And hurt person underneath, too. But it's okay. We all have to fake it till we make it in some instances. So agreement is going to feed people. Because if one person isn't surviving, nobody is. And then the green man's like, Oh, everyone's surviving, now I'm happy. Oh, hip hip hooray. Because <laughs> he thinks that nobody will like him because he did all these bad things. If he just changed his ways and tried to help people, we will love him. Because we know what we're bad people sometimes too. Even though you're really bad. If you kill people, you that's real bad. But if you try to change and you try to make people... Since you... If you hurt the people and killed them so much, you have to work your ass off. And if you have all the money, you have to work your ass off. Give back and help the people survive. Because you took... You took life away from people. But we still love you if you change your ways. We'll always accept you because every day is a new day to change. It looks like it's 3D. Anyways, the concept of the Bible. Treat others the way you want to be treated. That's all the only thing you need to know. Put everything, drop the Bible. Treat others the way you want to be treated through love. The golden rule. It was a good concept. Religion is a good concept that gets people together and not makes them less chaotic. But religion should have allow you to open your mind and understand. We can create a new religion. New religion. New religion. How to live in a happy place. This is my religion. I live by my religion. You can still do your religion. You can have some of mine. My religion accepts everybody's religion and loves everybody for who they are, no matter what size, what color. That's my religion. And you can still practice your religion, but if you want my religion too, my religion is like the, the cherry topper to a, a Sunday. And that makes it all better. And you're happy, you can still be, you can still practice your, your religion and your culture, that's your part of your culture, who you are. But you can also adapt, you can adopt me. Adopt me. Oh, my concept. Adopt me and your family. I, I can adopt you and my family. I think I left a lot of things. I'm gonna look through this and see where I for, where I left off on some ideas that I thought about new ideas, and I like those ones. And they made me they made me light up like my vision, literally. Because it's beautiful. And you're beautiful.
that's why